Hey folks, today I've got a really interesting pack T test for you. I'm going to be shooting the Sig Sauer P320. This is my son's gun. He loaned it to me for the day. And I'm going to be using uh, a round that the military has adopted. And it is a 147 grain, 9 millimeter plus P plus round. 147 grains. So I'm not accustomed to shooting that heavy of a round. I've done a little bit of uh, familiarization with it and uh, am purposely using this Sig Sauer because that's also a very, very similar gun to what is used by the military. Now let me tell you about the Pack t test. It all starts off with precision, accuracy, and that happens on that bullseye target right there. Precision is the extreme spread, the size of that five-shot group fired from 15 yards. Consistency is going to come from my lab radar chronograph looking at the standard deviation of those muzzle velocities. The T part of pack t comes from this gel block right here. Now, this 147 grain bullet is going to have to pass through a thick layer of canvas. This is actually my retired Carhartt jacket from a couple of years ago. It's got a blanket liner behind it. And then it's going to have to go through a piece of leather and then eventually into the 20% NATO gel block. I've got a backer there, older gel block, just in case this bullet makes it all the way through that 16 inch gel block. Well, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited to try out this gun and that ammo. Five rounds at 15 yards. I've shot quite a bit of 9mm, not so much with this gun, but uh, this got some nice hop to it, let's say. You can tell that there's quite a bit of energy. Velocities aren't very high. Of course, you kind of wouldn't expect that from a 147 grain 9mm round. That's five. We were ranging between the 980s and, you know, 10... 10, 15, 10, 17, like we're seeing here. 13.5 feet per second is the standard deviation with an average of 1,005. We'll take a look at, of course, how it did on target. Look like I have, I have some pulled off to the right from here. Of course, you saw it better than I did. But we'll make a full assessment of that bullseye target when we get back in. I'm actually also excited to test this out with our Mantis X10 recoil meter to see how this thing really does recoil. Next step is one round into the ballistic gelatin from a distance of seven yards. That did pretty good. Well, that was a well-placed shot, pretty much in the center, a little bit to this side of that brand new gel block. It ripped, as I was expecting, ripped right through that first gel block, and it's in here somewhere, this older gel block. We'll dig it out, find out what happened to that bullet. It did not exit that second gel block. Let me start my review by providing a brief overview of this bullet. When I was an MP in the U.S. Army, I started out using the 1911 230 grain full metal jacket ball ammo. While I was in the military, uh, we then switched over to the Beretta and then used the 124 grain 9mm uh, cartridge. That was the M882 
Well, now we're seeing an even heavier 9mm bullet being used, the 147 grain bullet that we tested today. Now, you may have heard that hollow point bullets are not allowed to be used by military. And that's the Hague Convention of 1899. It's interesting, though, that while the U.S. military has honored that Hague Convention decision, the U.S. never signed that Hague Convention agreement. So the use of a hollow point in both a handgun as well as a rifle round actually is allowed because of that little nuance of the Hague Convention agreement. Now, Winchester is manufacturing this ammo for the U.S. military, for the Army. And um, this is it right here. And I'll note that this is considered a 9mm plus P+. Plus. This, this ammunition is supposed to, and might uh, actually generate nearly 40,000 pounds per square inch. That's fairly higher than the standard um, 9 millimeter round and even a little bit higher than a plus P 9 millimeter round. I'm not sure though how much extra plus P plus this round is really getting because we were seeing 1,005 feet per second at the muzzle with a standard deviation of 13.6 feet per second. Now that's interesting because this is considered reference ammo and you might recall earlier in this video I alluded to the fact that I have shot this just a little bit as a trial and I did that trial um, in the winter and I got very similar muzzle velocities but I also got exactly the same, another five shot group, I got exactly the same standard deviation, 13.6 feet per second standard deviation. So this reference ammo is really, truly consistent. That takes care of our consistency part of the pack t test. Now let's compare these results to another 147 grain bullet that I have also shot and tested, and I did another video on this. This is the 147 grain Federal HST. That bullet gave us a muzzle velocity of 1,029 feet per second on average. Now isn't it interesting that these 147 grain bullets that I've been testing all have an average muzzle velocity below the speed of sound. Now the speed of sound is 1,100 feet per second at this elevation. In fact, there wasn't a single round of this particular ammo the M1153 that I tested today, wasn't a single round that exceeded the speed of sound. Now, I think that's interesting because if I had been using a silencer on this particular uh, SIG P320 pistol, I bet that this um, round being subsonic would be really quite quiet uh, as it's being fired. And I bet that that characteristic is another reason why the U.S. Army chose the 147 grain bullet for these applications. Now, it's interesting also, very, very recently, I read an article that says that the U.S. SOCOM has adopted a different bullet for its purposes. It is also, interestingly enough, a 147 grain bullet, but it is a Spear Gold Dot. Now the Gold Dot is really a good bullet. This is a Winchester bullet. I don't really know too much about it, uh, but I do know a lot about the Gold Dots. I've shot a lot of Gold Dots, uh, but not the 147 grain Gold Dot. If you're interested, by the way, in seeing a review, a pack t test, let's say, of the 147 grain 9mm Gold Dot bullet, let me know. Pop that idea uh, into the comments section below. Now, during our range session, when I was shooting off of the bench, you may have heard me note that this round has a particular amount of hop, I think is the word that I used. Uh, and when I did the 
recoil test using the Mantis X10, the results, the measurements of recoil bear that out to be true. Let's take a look at that. What we're seeing here is that on the right side there, that's my average results for the standard ammo. Standard ammo you see there is the 115 grain CCI Blazer Brass, that's ball ammo. Average recovery time just over one second for the five shot group with a muzzle rise of about 19 degrees. This 147 grain bullet gave me 1.2, about a one and a quarter second average recovery time and more muzzle rise, 22 and a half degrees. Let's dive into the rest of the results. We've already talked about consistency, 13.6 feet per second, actually in two separate, two separate five shot groups. Um, that's good. It didn't make our ideal single digit standard deviations or consistency, but still, very consistent ammo, nothing to complain about too much. Let's look at precision and accuracy. Precision, not bad either, not bad either. It is less than an inch, uh, five shot group, 0 0.823. I actually did some more shooting with this on that day. Um, and it, it groups very, very similar to this uh, all the time. So that's quite good. Now. The accuracy score, that's the bullseye score, uh, I scored 36 with zero in the X. Doesn't surprise you too much, pretty much everything in the seven ring right there. However, once again, this six hour pistol is not zeroed for that particular ammo. It's actually zeroed for the 124 grain Federal HST. And if I had zeroed it, uh, this bullet would have scored much, much better. A full 50 points, in fact, with all five in the X ring. Actually, that's a perfect score. You couldn't get a better score than that if I had zeroed that pistol for this round. And now the terminal performance results. Let's take a look at those. Now, as I was reading more about this round and how it was developed, why it was developed and chosen, I learned that it was designed for use, and this is a quote, where limited overpenetration is necessary to reduce collateral damage. Well, we didn't see that limited penetration today. In fact, when this bullet simply passed through the jacket and a relatively thin layer of leather, it failed to expand at all. It shot all the way through, traveled all the way through that first gel block and halfway through the second gel block, giving us a total penetration of 24 and a quarter inches. Now, since that backer gel block had been shot before and remelted a number of times before, um, I found exactly where that bullet was by holding it up to some really bright light and I could see it sitting right there. When I saw that when I got back here, I'm like, I don't think that bullet expanded at all. Cut it out, sure enough, not a bit of expansion. It did retain 99% of its weight. I don't know the true weight of it before it even was loaded or as it was loaded may have retained 100% of its weight, but officially 99% of its weight was retained. It didn't expand though. We get a 100% expansion, which simply means that the bullet is the same size after firing as it was before firing. The retained length was quite good, and it should be. It is more or less an intact bullet and probably could be reloaded. It just failed to expand. And because of that, the overpenetration, the failure to expand, this bullet actually scored poorly, 170 points in total. My take on this is that this is not a good choice for a personal or home defense bullet, just because it fairly clearly fails to expand and as a result will overpenetrate. 
Let me know your thoughts, your impressions about this bullet and about this test that we just did. And uh, we've got more PAC-T tests coming up. So until next time, thank you for watching.